section is on pre-neoplastic and neoplastic squamous lesions on cytology, a very important topic. And we have Dr. Rajendra Chaudhary with us to enlighten us on this topic. Dr. Rajendra Chaudhary is MBBS from BJ Government Medical College, Pune, and MD Pathology from State Medical College and Kame Hospital, Mumbai. He's currently working as Associate Professor in Department of Pathology at Dr. Vasant Rao Pavar Medical College, Nasik. He has various publications in histopathology and cytopathology and has been working in this field since 14 years. He is a past member of Association of Cytologists of Maharashtra. Over to you, Dr. Rajendra. Thank you, Madam, uh, for the kind information, uh, the kind introduction. Now, uh, the topic given to me is uh, the pre-neoplastic and neoplastic squamous lesions uh, of the uh, cervix, which are seen on cytology. Uh, the concept that uh, invasive carcinoma of the cervix is antedated by intraepithelial neoplastic change, uh, what is also called as carcinoma in situ, was postulated at the beginning of 20th century. Now, the uh, epithelial abnormalities of uh, squamous character, they are derived from the ectocervical, either from the ectocervical squamous uh, basal cells or from the endocervical uh, reserve cells. Majority of these lesions, they regress uh, to less abnormal change after a variable time. Uh, for correct interpretation of these abnormalities, uh, thorough, thorough knowledge of the cytological and histological features uh, is essential. Now, before going towards the uh, lesions, the pre-neoplastic and neoplastic lesions, uh, just a recap of what, how these uh, normal uh, cells, uh, uh, squamous cells, they look uh, uh, in cytological uh, smears. Now, uh, the first one is the superficial cells, uh, which are the most mature cells uh, uh, in the past sphere. These are large polygonal cells, which are at the end stage uh, of maturation process. They are clear, translucent, pink, uh, they have got the clear, translucent and pink cytoplasm. They have got sharply defined boundaries and they have got small pycnotic central nuclei. The next one are the uh, intermediate cells. Now, what is the importance of intermediate cells are in fact the uh, nucleus of the uh, intermediate cell is considered as a reference for other cells in the cervical sphere. Now, these uh, have got round to oval nuclei about 8 to 10 micron in size. Now, uh, the nuclei are larger uh, than the superficial cells with uh, finely granular uh, chromatin. Uh, uh, I was showing uh, the superficial cells with uh, optic nucleus and uh, large polygonal cells with uh, translucent pink cytoplasm. Then the next one uh, was uh, the intermediate cells with a grooved uh, nucleus and uh, the nucleus is considered uh, as a reference for other uh, cells in the cervical sphere. The next one are the parabasal cells. They have got round to oval cells uh, with small uh, cytoplasmic body. They have got relatively large oval to round nuclei. Uh, the cytoplasm is dense. And uh, now the important point is the parabasal cells, they are not seen in the normal reproductive age group. Uh, in fact, they are seen in the postmenopausal uh, age group. The now coming towards the squamous intraepithelial neoplasia. Now the older terminology uh, was uh, using uh, the words like mild, moderate, and severe dysplasia. Now uh, the drawback of using these terminologies was uh, it was deficient in advising about the true nature of abnormalities, and uh, the cytologist has to uh, write down all the features uh, which she has uh, he or she has seen on the smear and then convey all those uh, points to the gynecologist and then only that could uh, be uh, like uh, uh, the information could have been uh, given to the gynecologist. But now in the Bethesda system, the system has uh, divided uh, the uh, reporting into, into two categories. One is uh, the negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy, which includes the uh, uh, lesions like the inflammatory diseases, the infectious diseases, and other uh, reactive changes like uh, uh, the changes due to repair or radiation or, or atrophic changes. And the other group is, of course, the uh, intraepithelial lesions, which are again divided into only two groups, the uh, low-grade uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion and the high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Now, 
the uh, these two categories uh, amongst these the low grade uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion uh, which again uh, it includes these two important uh, uh, aspects one is the older terminology uh, which was called as mild dysplasia or which was also called as cil cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1 and the other was the changes uh, which were consistent with the hpv infection which included the multinucleation the pellicular halos and slight nuclear atypia the next uh, group is the high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion also called as hcl uh, which includes the uh, moderate dysplasia the severe dysplasia that is cil2 cil3 and the cil3 again includes the carcinoma in situ so all these conditions or all these groups are again included in, uh, in the hcl now there are other uh, uh, group of abnormalities like the uh, uh, the condition which is called as atypical squamous cells uh, which is between the negative uh, uh, for intraepithelial region and the true intraepithelial regions now the presence what is the importance of these uh, uh, cells the atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance is that they imply uh, risk for uh, underlying high grade cervical intraepithelial lesion that's why uh, this group is important now now uh, the proposed bethesda uh, terminology has uh, led to uh, the uh, which it considers the expected uh, clinical behavior and it is uh, a targeted uh, management oriented uh, uh, system for of reporting uh, now regan and associates they uh, introduced the term dysplasia and uh, the dysplasia uh, is uh, is like a disordered growth pattern majority of the changes would regress spontaneously or if they are left untreated they may uh, uh, persist and they may uh, uh, like uh, grow into the malignancy now uh, the dysplasia is applied to spectrum of reactions involving either the squamous uh, cells or the squamous like cells now which are the squamous uh, like cells these are the metaplastic uh, epithelium uh which is at this uh, squamous columnar junction so these are the uh, two cell groups which are affected by dysplasia now uh the uh, lesions were uh, further graded according to the uh, the in the in the older terminology the lesions were graded according to mild moderate and severe dysplasia in the histological perspective according to the thickness of the epithelium uh, which was involved but what happened is that because of the dual terminology which has which was used uh, the dysplasia was used as a separate terminology and carcinoma in situ was used as a separate terminology so that led uh, the gynecologist to believe that dysplasia the dysplastic lesions may not require the treatment and that's why the bethesda uh, system was uh, uh, it was invented or it was uh, modified now the majority of these lesions they uh, they begin at the semicolonal junction or what is also called as a transformation zone now coming towards the first entity uh, we'll uh, start with the mild dysplasia also called as low grade uh, sil the cells are the cells are singly lined uh, the majority of the cells are either superficial or intermediate cells they have got uh, the size the size of the cell is slightly slightly reduced as compared to the normal uh, cells which we see on the pap smear the cytoplasm is abundant uh, sinophilic or eosinophilic the nucleus is enlarged which is around uh, 3 to 5 times of the uh, nucleus of the intermediate cells the chromatin is finely granular and evenly distributed with a very slight uh, hyperchromasia nucleoli are absent now the next category the moderate dysplasia uh, which is uh, included in high grade uh, sil the cells are again single uh, singly lined cells or they can be cells which are in the sheets uh, now the cell uh, category is predominantly superficial intermediate with inclusion of parabasal cell type the cell size is moderately reduced the cells are predominantly round to oval but occasional uh, spindle elongated these are cells uh, may be uh, may be seen now the nuclei are again enlarged they are round to oval some nuclei can be irregular or elongated the chromatin is again uh, 
evenly or uh, uh, the sorry the chromatin is regularly distributed with slight to moderate hyperchromasia nucleoli are usually they are not present the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is increased and the nuclear to cytoplasmic uh, the nucleus size is usually half of the it occupies almost half of the cytoplasmic area of the cell next is the severe dysplasia uh, and carcinoma in situ uh, which is included in the in the uh, scl that is hybrid scl the cells are similar in appearance to the parabezal cells the cytoplasm is scanty and it is like it is like uh, like a rim around the nucleus the cells are either they are isolated or there can be syncytial groups with indistinct uh, cytoplasmic borders and loss of polarity now the nucleus here in the uh, severe dysplasia it occupies uh, three fourth of the cytoplasmic area of the cell the nucleoli are again or usually they are absent uh, but the nuclei the nuclei can show spindled elongated or bizarre forms uh, sometimes now the dysplasia uh, the, the, there is evidence that the, the, uh, most of this dysplasia they regress spontaneously uh, the mild uh, uh, dysplasia of course while the severe dysplasia and the carcinoma uh, in situ are more likely to persist or progress to uh, the uh, malignancy now the punch biopsies uh, can eradicate uh, areas of uh, uh, the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia completely Uh, either it can do uh, by a direct uh, way of removal or by altering the balance between the host and the uh, neoplasia now fewer than 15% of the dysplasia they progress to malignancy the next category is the carcinoma in situ the now uh, if we compare the severe dysplasia and carcinoma in situ large number of abnormal cells will be there uh, in, in this uh, carcinoma in situ the cells will be uh, predominantly arranged in uh, syncytial aggregates with indistinct cell borders uh, of course some isolated cells uh, will be there the cell size will be uh, comparatively comparatively smaller uh, the cytoplasm is little uh, cyanophilic and without signs of maturation now the nuclei they again occupy half of the cellular area where nuclei can uh, commonly noted now the chromatin is again uh, even can be even or there can be a irregular uh, distribution of the chromatin uh, uh, pattern the nuclear membrane is disrupted some micro nucleoli can rarely be seen in uh, carcinoma in situ the next category is the invasive squamous cell carcinoma uh, the first one among this is the non keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma the cells are round to oval which are arranged in syncytial aggregates the cytoplasm is cyanophilic now uh, here the nc ratio is comparatively uh, decreased because of the relative increase in the cytoplasmic volume the, that is a change from the uh, cin the nuclei are round to oval uh, there is variation in the size uh, of the nuclei uh, the chromatin distribution is uneven the chromatin can be coarsely granular uh, and uh, the chromatin the nuclear hyperchromatin now here uh, the nuclei the chromatin is irregularly uh, dispersed you can see some micro nucleoli here there is clumping of the chromatin uh, now there can be a association with unsatisfactory specimens because of associated necrosis and breeding Uh, in these uh, type of smears the next one is the keratinizing uh, squamous cell carcinoma the cells are again round to oval cells which are again arranged in syncytial aggregates with indistinct cell borders uh, there can be singly lined cells with uh, dense uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm bizarre shapes can be seen the uh, fibrillary cytoplasmic strands uh, can also be seen now the cell the nuclei are round to oval with considerable variation in the size uh, bizarre nuclei or elongated nuclei can be seen the uh, nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is again lower the reason is the reason being 
the large volume of the cytoplasm. Uh, the chromatin is unevenly distributed and uh, coarsely granular, and the nuclei are hyperchromatic. Now, uh, the nucleoli are uh, present over here. The nucleoli can be micro nucleoli or macro nucleoli. Here you can see that uh, tumor diathesis uh, can be seen in the background, a dirty necrotic uh, type of background with some inflammatory cells. Now, uh, the reduction in the incidence of squamous cell carcinoma and the mortality associated with it uh, is uh, because of the result of the cytological screening and subsequent detection and removal of the precursor lesions. Uh, despite a relatively high proportion of incorrect diagnosis in large scale population screening programs, cervical cytology is proven to, uh, to be the most effective tool for the diagnosis of cervical cancer because of the frequency of testing and the long precancerous stages of the disease prior to the development of invasive carcinoma. So that is the importance of uh, uh, doing the cervical uh, cytology screening and the path screenings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajendra.